Hey everyone, it's Brett here with The Tuning School, and on this Tech Tuesday, we're gonna be talking about the truth of E85 and flex fuel. So before we get started, let's talk a little bit about what E85 is and what flex fuel is. So E85 is an ethanol-based fuel that's been popularized a lot in recent years. The reason for its popularity is the perception that it makes more horsepower. So a lot of people are putting it on their vehicles because it's a really good thing for them to do, they think. And so E85 in and of itself, like I said, is an ethanol-based fuel, and that 85 number is the percentage of ethanol that's actually in it. So 85 would be 85%. Now, what we see though is a lot of times when you're getting E85 from the pump, you're getting anywhere from 40% to 60% ethanol. You're not actually getting the full 85%. And that brings us into what flex fuel is. So the reason for flex fuel is it's going to sense the actual content of ethanol in the fuel as it leaves the gas tank and goes to the engine. So it's an actual sensor itself that's sensing the content and then sending that content information to the ECU. Now, why is that important? Well, the reason is what we call stoichiometric values, right? So every fuel has a stoichiometric combustion. What that means is the ideal mix of parts air to one part fuel that's gonna get the best burn inside the cylinders. When you look at gasoline, it's got a stoichiometric value of 14.7 parts air to one part fuel. When you look at E85, it's got a stoichiometric value of 9.6 parts air to one part fuel. Now, the reason for this, the reason that there's so much less air, we should say, so really what that means is by there being less air, there is more fuel. The reason there's so much more fuel inside the cylinders is because E85 has roughly 30% less energy than gasoline. That means you have to use more of it or to get the same amount of bang as you did before. But the issue is as you go from straight gasoline to 85, any ethanol percentage somewhere in between is going to have a different stoichiometric value. And so because of this, that's why flex fuel is so important because it's gonna change the stuff in your ECU on the fly. Now, we've talked a lot about E85 on our channel in the past. In fact, we have a race fuel series where E85 actually run, won a shootout against a lot of other race fuels. But today, I wanna talk about the truths about E85 and flex fuel and some of the benefits of running it or not running it. So one of the first truths we're gonna talk about is the fact that E85 realistically isn't always the best for daily drivers. Now, I'll explain to you exactly what I mean. Now, E85 isn't widely available everywhere. For example, where we're at in Florida, there's only a few gas station chains that actually carry this stuff regularly. And like I said, it's even got varying content at that. So the problem is if you're trying to daily drive a car and let's say you wanna go on Hot Rod Power Tour and you wanna drive across the country, but your car only runs on E85, that's it. That's all it can run. It does not have a flex fuel sensor. You're gonna have a hard time going on Power Tour because you might not be able to find gas stations that actually sell E85. Now. An alternative to this is you could fill your car up with a can, with let's say like a VP or a Renegade, like race fuel style E85, you could fill your car up with that. But most people aren't going to fill their car up out of a 55 gallon drum every week. It's just not realistic. Now, on the flip side of this, if you had a race car, then it's more realistic. You're not daily driving your race car. You're not putting a lot of miles on it. Usually you're trailering it to the track. Then it makes a little more sense to run just E85 but you still have to watch out for those varying contents because even though you're running just an E85 tune, doesn't mean that you're always gonna get E85 out of the gas pump. And so all of these things kind of make E85 not a realistic option for most street driven cars. Now there's exceptions to those rules. You may have really good gas stations that have a consistent ethanol percentage and you may not commute that far to work every day or there's a lot of stations available. In that case, then you can do it. But what we see is it's not widely an option. Now. If you wanted to still run E85, but not have to deal with all those hassles, flex fuel is your best option. The reason this is the best option is because flex fuel gives you the ability to run whatever you want. Fill it up with 93 today, fill it up with E85 tomorrow, fill it up with E40 the next day. It doesn't matter because every time you fill up with something different, the tune is automatically gonna change based off of what the sensor is seeing from the actual content itself. So truth number two is if you want to run just E85, you're probably gonna have to tune the car every time you fill it up. So what I mean by that is, let's say today you're on the dyno and you actually have E85 in the tank. You tested it and it did come out at E85, or maybe you're even using a race style, race fuel style E85. And then in two weeks from now, you have to fill the car up again. When you go to fill the car up, you're gonna have to test 
the actual fuel as it goes into the car, you'll see what the ethanol content is, and you'll probably find it's not exactly 85%. Let's say maybe it's E65, so it's 65%. At that point, you then have to open your laptop and change your tune before you even leave the gas station in order for the vehicle and the engine to run properly on that different ethanol content. Now, that's not realistic for a lot of people, and so because of that, they're typically gonna opt to go the route of the flex fuel sensor, which is gonna automatically compensate for you. Now, the next truth is that the actual application of whether E85 or flex fuel may not be as simple as you would think. You would think, oh, I can just fill the car up with E85, or oh, I can just install this flex fuel sensor. It's pretty straightforward, right? But reality is a lot of times if you're dealing with an older vehicle, you're gonna have to get larger injectors. So we talked about how E85 has less energy in it than gasoline, so you have to use more of it. Well, because of that, you actually have to use larger injectors so you can actually get the right amount of fuel into the cylinders. Up next is your fuel pump. Maybe your fuel pump's old and worn out. So you're actually gonna have to possibly get a larger fuel pump as well to actually get to where you wanna be with the fueling requirements. And so because of that, a lot of people don't consider that it's not as simple as just using E85 or installing a flex fuel sensor. There's a lot of other parts that you may have to upgrade in order for this to work. So truth number four is gonna be about power production. So the purpose of E85, typically in most application, is the added octane you get from actually using it. Now this is important because we will have engines on occasion for of what we call knock limited. What that means is, we, if we could run more timing, the engine would make more horsepower, but a lot of times the cylinder pressures are so high that it just doesn't give us the ability to do so on 93 octane. So in cases where engines are knock limited, you can actually run 85 and get a little bit more timing and you're gonna make more power. Now, oftentimes though, this is on really high horsepower, very high boost applications, which to be honest, isn't most of the applications of you guys watching this video. A lot of you guys have naturally aspirated daily driven cars, but you're still wanting to run E85. And while you will make more power, it's not gonna be as drastic as a gain as you would if you had that high horsepower, high boost application. Now, something else to consider is not only the benefit of octane from E85, it's also the fact that it has a little bit of oxygenation. So when you look at the molecular makeup of ethanol fuels, they actually carry an extra oxygen molecule, which is why you could put E85 in a car and run the same timing, but still even get a little bit more horsepower. We discovered that in our fuel test series that we have done before. So truth number five is that flex fuel is not for everybody. So you're probably watching this video getting excited going between E85 alone and E85 with flex fuel. Flex fuel sounds like the way to go. That's what I wanna do. The problem is flex fuel is not applicable to all vehicles and all ECUs. What we've been primarily talking about today really applies to GM vehicles and GM vehicles that are roughly newer than 2006. And so what you have in that case is some vehicles came with flex fuel sensors already installed and some didn't, but those ones that didn't typically are gonna have the ability in the ECU inside of the tune to actually turn that on after you wire in the sensor. Now, when you start looking at companies like Ford and Dodge, a lot of times they're not gonna use a sensor, they're gonna use something called virtual flex fuel. Now, the way virtual flex fuel works is it's gonna be based off of the fuel trims. So it looks at how far off your fueling is over time and then will change your stoichiometric value accordingly because it thinks you have a different fuel. The problem with this is it's a very slow system. So it takes a lot of time to actually kick in. And so your vehicle typically will drive very badly until it figures out that there's actually a different fuel in it. So for our performance applications, that's typically not a great option. It doesn't matter if it's Ford GM or Dodge. Now, if you're getting disheartened because you think you're not gonna be able to do this, rest assured that there is some options out there for you still. Our friends over at Advanced Fuel Dynamics have this cool system called a ProFlex, which actually allows you to retrofit a flex fuel system to a lot of different vehicles. For more information on that system, you can actually check out a video we've done on it in the past. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it shines some light on the subject of E85 and flex fuel and better equips you to make the right decision for your application. For more high performance tuning knowledge, make sure you follow us on social media. And as always, stay tuned.